Hello folks, Lawrence here with the brand spanking new Inno 3D iChill GTX 1070 Ti Hercules X3. Now I will go on a little rant later on in the video, but first let's have a look at the card itself. So this gorgeous cooler is the Hercules X3 cooler, which was also on the 1080 Ti, which I tested some time ago. Now it has three large fans to keep the 2.5 slot heatsink cool. Now that means you will need to reserve three slots for just a single card, but even in SLI there's enough room between the cards so it'll breathe rather well. This iChill logo has RGB illumination, but it's just load based. So you can't really set it up to sync with the rest of your RGB system. Now, I do think it's probably going to be rather easy to just bodge the light connector onto a 50-50 header on your motherboard if you really want to. Now this card is powered by just a single eight pin connector, just like with the 970 that I've been using for a really long time, which is great for cable management because it's just one cable instead of two. The IO is the standard IO, so that's triple display ports, an HDMI port and a single link DVI port. Now, as you can see, because of this X3 cooler, the card is huge, but it's only standard height, so it should fit easily in most gaming oriented cases. And the cooler really is all Inno 3D or other card manufacturers are allowed to change to this card. Nvidia has some really strict regulations when it comes to the 1070 Ti chip. So first of all, card manufacturers are not allowed to actually bin the chip, so they don't know which chip they're putting in which card. As a result, if you buy the cheapest 1070 Ti, it can actually have a better chip in it than the most expensive 1070 Ti that you can possibly buy. This really is a dick move from Nvidia because not only does it negatively affect the board partners and how they look, it's also really annoying for us, the consumers. And I think in the end, the only reason they do this is just so that they can sell more Founders Edition cards. And if they find out they can get away with this sort of business practice, they might do it with all their future cards. And then the next issue is overclocking because once again, board partners are not allowed to do it. I mean, we are as the end user, but Every single card you buy will run at a stock clock speed of 1607 megahertz, which, you know, is really hard for them to then differentiate between products. Now, as far as I'm aware, ever since the first TI card, TI basically meant awesome and great for overclockers and enthusiasts, but now TI is more like kneecapped, you know, you just can't really do anything with this chip when you're a board partner. So about this chip then, it's actually the same GP104 as the 1080, but with a few fewer CUDA cores at only 2432 CUDA cores. Also the memory that's hooked up to it is clocked slightly lower. Now performance wise, and we'll give you performance numbers in just a bit, I was expecting 1080 like performance and I found that to be mostly true. It's about 4% slower than a 1080 because obviously it has to be faster than a 1070 as well and there's only a very tiny performance gap in between those two cards. Now luckily overclocking isn't completely disabled and I was actually able to boost this card all the way up to 2050 megahertz which is rather massive and at that point it was actually more like 1080 Ti performance I mean compared to a stock card of course. Um, it's really, really good performance for the money. There is a power limit, but my card would only use about 114% of that power limit going to the highest frequencies that I can push it. To go further, I'd have to modify the BIOS. And given that this card is just a loner, um, I'm not really going to tinker with it too much because I don't want to break it. For those who do want to tinker with this card though, it's an amazing cooler. At stock, it doesn't even reach 60 degrees. With my standard overclocks on there, it would only go up to 74. And I mean, Nvidia will let this card go all the way up to 94 degrees Celsius. So cooling is insane. And it does all of that while being really quiet. Like you hardly even notice that the fans are spinning even under full load. So that's a massive thumbs up there. Overclocking over the standard boost, I was only able to get five and a half percent extra out of it. But again, if you start messing around with the BIOS, you can go higher. So to conclude this video then, it's actually two conclusions. First of all, towards Inno 3D, I'd like to say, first of all, thank you for sending me this card, but also Inno 3D did a really good job of it. It looks good. It has a nice backplate on it, nice cooler. It's super cool and it's quiet and it has basically, except for the RGB LED, which isn't addressable, it has everything you could possibly want. So good job, Inno 3D. To a video, I like to say, Go suck a fat one, really. This is not really an acceptable business practice. And if you guys do this with other cards, I simply will no longer be reviewing NVIDIA cards because it's just unacceptable behavior from, you know, the largest graphics card maker. And to you consumers, I would say if you're the type of fit and forget person, 
go ahead and buy this card, it's great value for money. If you're an enthusiast though, save up a few extra bucks and go get a 1080 or even a 1080 Ti. You'll have way more fun with those cards when it comes to overclocking. So then guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button and hit the subscribe button for when I make a video that you do like. I put up a video every Friday at 7. If you want to get more frequent updates though, there's a Twitter and an Instagram page so you can get some sneak previews of that headset over there. And that's basically it. If you want to help me get better equipment for lights and audio and lenses and all that sort of cool stuff, um, that's all possible thanks to Patreon. So if you want to join the awesome people who are supporting this channel, there's a Patreon link in the description below. For now though, thank you very much for watching and next week there will be an Astro A20 review.